let's say I input a signal over here and what I get out of this box, I don't really know what's inside it, is a signal that looks like this. Now, you can see that it's the same signal, but it has a greater swing or amplitude. Now, the phase reversal is something, we'll talk about that a little later, but you can see that the signal is amplified. Now, if you want to know how did the input signal get amplified, then this lesson is meant for you. Now, when we look inside the box, we find we have an NPN transistor here. You know that this is an NPN transistor from the direction of the arrow, which points from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And this NPN transistor is in common emitter mode. See, this terminal is the emitter, this is the base, and this is the collector. You can see that the emitter is common to the input side and the output side. The input side is between the base and the emitter and the output side is between the collector and the emitter. The input current will be the base current which we are going to denote by IB and the output current will be the collector current which we are going to denote as IC. See actually the direction of the See, the direction of the current in the collector terminal will be in this direction. That doesn't matter. It is still called the output current. You can see that from Kirchhoff's rule because the current over here is leaving the circle. So, the other two currents have to move into the circle. When the transistor works as an amplifier, the base emitter junction, this junction is forward biased and the collector emitter junction is reverse biased. So we will connect a battery and a resistance over here to forward bias this junction and the battery will be connected so that the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the P side and we will denote this by VBB and the resistance by RB. Now let us take a look at the output side. Here we are going to connect a resistance and a battery, the positive side of the battery will be connected to the negative end over here and we will denote this by RC and this is VCC. Now you can see that the voltage over here, if you apply Kirchhoff's loop rule in this circuit over here, you can see that VBB is equal to IB RB plus VBE. VBE would be this potential difference between these two terminals. So VBB is equal to IB RB plus VBE. Now let's take a look at the output circuit. Over here we can write the voltage. You have VCE which is this potential difference between these two points. This is C and this is E. So, VCE is this potential difference between these two points, which is this and this. Again, applying Kirchhoff's rule, you can write this as VCC minus ICRC. So, just notice that these two expressions are not exactly alike so that you don't get confused when you are using these two equations. Okay, now we come to the main part of how this works as an amplifier. See, there is a link between the input and the output circuits. The current in the output circuit IC varies with the current in the input circuit IB. If IB increases, then IC also increases. If IB decreases, then IC also decreases. See, we will take a look at the output characteristics of a transistor to understand this in a better manner. See, if you recall, the output characteristics are a plot between the output current IC and the output voltage, which is VCE, hence the name output characteristics. Now, 
Let's just take a look at an output characteristic curve. See the output characteristics are obtained when we plot a graph between the output voltage VCE and the output current IC and this is taken for a fixed value of the base current IB. First the base current is kept fixed and then by varying the output voltage the variation of current is plotted. So we find that first the current increases and then it saturates and then it stays at the same value even if we increase the voltage say up to about 15 volts. Now this is an output characteristic. So this is a curve that we get for one particular value of IB. Let's say this is about 20 micro amperes because the base current is going to be very small. Now say I increase the value of the base current to 30 micro ampere. So I get another curve which looks similar but you get a higher value of the collector current. So say this value of the base current is 30 micro ampere and now I get a higher value of the collector current and you know that the collector current is going to be in milli amperes. Let's say the collector current over here is say about 2 milli ampere and here it's close to say about 3 milli ampere which means when we are increasing the base current from 20 micro ampere to 30 micro ampere the collector current is also increasing from 2 milli ampere to 3 milli ampere. If we were to decrease the, collect the base current from say 30 to 20, then the collector current would also decrease. This means that the input current is able to control the output current. So now for a transistor to work as an amplifier, we need to apply this input signal at the base. The input signal at the base will cause a variation in the base current this will in turn produce a variation in the collector current and a variation in the collector current will be reflected by a variation in the output voltage. When this AC input signal is applied at the base, it changes the voltage at the base from VBB plus VI to VBB minus VI where VI is the amplitude of this voltage. Now we want to obtain an output form which is not distorted. So for that we need to choose some proper biasing values. In other words, we need to take a proper operating point for our transistor. Did that sound a little confusing? Let's just take a look at it. Once again we look at the output characteristic curves. I've drawn values of IC for a few more values of the base current. Now this line that we are going to draw is called a load line because the position of the line depends on the load in the circuit which is the value of the resistance RC. To draw this line we will consider two points, one where it cuts the X axis or the VCE axis and the other where it cuts the Y axis or the IC axis. To find the point where it cuts the x-axis, we will put IC equal to 0 in this equation and that gives us VCE equal to VCC and which in our case I have assumed a value of 12 volts. So one is this point over here. Next to find a point on the y-axis, I will put VCE equal to 0. Now that gives us IC equal to VCC over RC and here I have assumed a value of 2 kilo ohms for RC. So this value comes out to be 6 milliampere. So we have another point to be here. Now we will join these two points with a straight line and this line is called the load line. Now, what's so special about this line? See, each point on this load line is an operating point 
of a transistor which means if i choose a point over here then there is a specific value of ib which is 10 ic which is about 1 milliampere and vce which is about which is a little less than 10 volts so each point over here is called an operating point now say i call this point a over here and if i choose this at the op this as the operating point then at this point vce is equal to 0 and in this case the transistor is said to be in saturation mode and maximum current is flowing through the transistor so point a is a point at which the transistor is said to be in saturation mode suppose i now move the operating point to the other extreme end which is v at point v ic is equal to 0 which means the transistor is in cutoff mode so you can see that there are two extremities at a it is in saturation mode at b it is in cutoff mode and in between the transistor is in active mode now we will choose a point which is roughly somewhere close to the midpoint of this line and this point q is called the operating point for our transistor now you might be wondering that why do we need an operating point which is somewhere in the middle of the load line see when we connect the ac signal then depending on the positive and negative values of the input signal the base current is going to vary from let's say this value over here to this value over here because when the input signal is applied the base current is going to swing that the variation in the base current is from here to here and from here to here now we want to choose an operating point in such a way that the transistor remains in the active region for all values of the input signal we do not want it to go into saturation or cutoff mode because in that case the signal will get distorted so the idea is to choose an operating point somewhere in the middle of the load line so that the variations of the input signal are taken care of and we do not get a distorted signal now once we have made our choice of the operating point q we note down the values of ib say ib is 30 milliampere the value of ic which is 3 milliampere sorry this was 30 microampere this is 3 milliampere and the value of vce which is around 5 volts and then by a proper choice of the input resistances the output resistance and the voltages and this is called biasing of the transistor now we have two little things left to discuss one is the phase reversal of the output signal and the other is the expression for the amplification or voltage gain now take a look at this circuit we have shown the input signal and the output signals you might have noticed capacitors are placed at the input and the output side and these are used to block any dc components see the dc if there is a dc component in the input signal it can change the base voltage which will change the base current and hence the operating point now we want to keep the base current fixed so that the operating point does not shift we have another capacitor which is placed at the output and this blocks any dc signals from appearing across the output that we are going to take now you already know that vbb is equal to ibrb plus vbe and at the same time vce over here is equal to vcc minus icrc using this equation over here the phase reversal can be understood during the positive half cycle of the input voltage which means when the input voltage increases during this half cycle the base current will increase because the input voltage 
increases. Now when the base current increases, the collector current you know is also going to increase. Now over here if you look if you look at this expression, we are subtracting this term. So if this current becomes higher, we are subtracting a larger term, a larger number from the collector voltage which is constant. So which means that we get a decrease in the output voltage. Whereas if the base current decreases, then this factor IC decreases. So we are subtracting a smaller quantity and the output voltage increases. This causes a phase reversal by 180 degrees. Now next let's find the voltage gain. For the AC signal, the voltage gain will be given by V0 which in this case is VCE over VI. If you notice we've used small v in both the cases because this is the part which is the AC component. Now on the input side when the AC signal is present we can write the voltage as VBB plus VI which is the AC component is equal to VBE plus VBE. This is the variation in the base voltage when we apply the AC signal plus IB plus IB times RB. So if you compare it with this expression you can see that now we have a varying component of the current due to the AC input signal. So you can also understand this if you recall, recall the output characteristics that we had drawn for increasing values of IB, we had plotted a graph between IC and VCE and this was the load line and we took this as the operating point. Now when the base voltage, when the input signal is, when the input signal is applied, the base voltage, let us say it varies between these two points. When the AC signal is applied, let's say that the base voltage varies between these two points over here. So this is the variation in the base voltage. And you can see that corresponding to this, we have a variation in the collector current also. So the variation in the collector current can be shown like this. And you also have a variation in the collector emitter voltage. This is the value at operating point and the value varies about this. So all the quantities are going to vary when we apply this sinusoidal signal. So accordingly we have modified this expression. The quantities in caps are the quantities that are maintained constant by biasing the transistor and these quantities which are written in small letters are, the, are those which will vary with time and this is due to the alternating signal. Now coming back to our derivation over here, you can see that VBB is equal to VBE plus IBRB. So we are going to cancel this out and we are left with VI is equal to variation in base emitter voltage plus IB times RB. Now this variation in base emitter voltage is extremely small. This more or less stays constant at say about 0.7 volts if it is a silicon transistor which is the cut in voltage for the forward bias over here. So we will write VI as IB times RB. Similarly writing an expression on the output side we have VCE plus the small variation in collector emitter voltage is equal to VCC minus IC plus IC is the variation times RC. See if you noticed over here we haven't written any variation for VCC because this biasing voltage is kept constant. Once again VCC, VCE is equal to VCC plus IC minus ICRC. This expression we are using this expression to cancel out these terms and that leaves us with VCE the output voltage is minus IC times RC. So you can see that VCE over here, this voltage is the output voltage V0. So this gives us the voltage gain which is the 
output voltage over the input voltage as minus IC RC over IB RB. IC over RC over here is the beta current gain, the AC current gain and this is the load resistance divided by the input resistance which is RB. Beta AC because these are the AC components is almost the same as beta DC. So, we can use a value of beta DC over here times RC over RB and this gives us the voltage amplification. Thank you.